And so as the cars come on to the start line for the second race of the afternoon, we can see down there on pole position, uh, that is Barry Squibb from Torquay. Barry, in fact, has uh, had a fairly lean time in rallycross of recent years, but has come back to the end of 1987 with a vengeance, winning his class on one occasion in the British Championship and also taking an outright victory at the Swindon circuit late in the year. So with that kind of form behind him and a nicely prepared front engine, rear-wheel drive, two-liter BDA Ford Escort, he could well be a man to watch in this one. We'll shortly know because it's the green light and it's Rob Gibson, though, coming through from row number two, the power of the Porsche telling once again and the traction of the rear engine car off the start line Squibby up into second place there, but it's Rob Gibson going down, tumble downhill with Bob Smith from Jimmy Bold and one of the Sierra Cosmos there, I think that's Trevor Reeves midfield, but uh, down into the S's for the first time and we can see the Squibby got it all wrong going in and it's Bob getting sandwiched there between other cars with Bob Smith going around the outside, Bob Smith going onto the grass and getting caught and hit there very hard by Ivan Mokes. A lot of trouble there. Oh dear, Bob Smith's car looks very, very bad indeed. And uh, the rest of the field goes through and more problems for one of the Sierra Cosmos up there. That, I believe, might have been Trevor. Yes, it is Trevor Reeves with the unpredictable handling of the Sierra Cosmos catching him out. And in fact, the red flags are coming out. The race is being stopped. Obviously, we've got to Bob Smith's car in what is considered to be a dangerous position down there in the S's. So the race is, in fact, being stopped. More drama then. Bob Smith seems OK. That's him in the cream overalls at the top of the picture. But it was certainly a nasty moment for him and Ivan Mopes. Let's just have another look. We went down into the first of the, the left hander at the bottom of the hill and Barry Squibb went out very wide to the tyres. I got round on his outside and thought I'd out dragged him up the hill. Um, he kept his foot in and just kept driving and driving and uh, from what I can, what I can see, uh, he drove me and spun me right round into the circuit. Um, so I was then cross in front of the rest of the traffic uh, unfortunately, there's the guy who was closest managed to avoid me. Uh, Ivan was blind and just went straight into the car. We've seen the damaged door. Now, if that had been your side, that could have really been quite unpleasant. Uh, yes, although the car's very strong, I certainly wouldn't like to have been, uh, been in that side. There was enough, enough from the seatbelts. Yeah, you were obviously a bit shaken up. Yeah. The car is a problem, you're not going to make the rerun, but are you and the car going to be all right for the rest of the series, do you think? Um, I don't know about the rest of the series. Um, that really depends uh, on how bad it is. The boys seem to think the shell's twisted, so we'll just have to play that by ear. OK, well, nice to see you well, and uh, thank goodness you're all right. All right, thanks very Cheers. much. Bye. Right, so the rerun then of the Formula B category, and one driver who must feel very fortunate to be included in now as a reserve is Ross Browning. Ross, must feel good to be on the front row there. Yeah, it must. I've got Gibson on my right behind me that I'm very uh, wary about. I'm sure you are, but uh, a good position on the grid, nevertheless. Oh, yeah, very much so. So give it the big one and off you go, eh? Yep. <laughs> OK, well, we'll wait and see what he does. Meantime, as you can see, a vacant space on the front there because there's no Bob Smith following that bad prank. A little bit of creeping on the grid from uh, Colin Claxton, but eventually they do get going. And uh, somewhat predictably, it's Rob Gibson away with Ross Browning away into second place. Ross Browning in second with our camera on board into third place. And it's Barry Baker with uh, Ross Lowe coming through in second. And he can see already vanishing into the distance. Uh, it is Rob Gibson. Rob there with the two-wheel drive Porsche. Three litre coming away out of the S's is Gary Baker and the rest of the field coming through. Warwick Barnes are at the back with the TR8 as uh, Tom Bissett goes off onto the grass. Meantime, the leader is Brown through its airbin for the first time and that's Rob Gibson. Rob Gibson leading the field as we can see Roger Newbold under a lot of pressure there from the Sierra Cosworth and Roger Newbold getting a bit crossed up as they go into Langley's Gap, getting away with it. But it's Ross Browning coming through here in second spot. Roger Newbold showing a little bit of damage to the front of his. Renault there, the rest of the field going through with Warwick Barnes at the back with the Quaife Developments DR8, but it's Gibbo coming down over Hobby's drop with Ross Browning in second place. Oh, Ross Browning coming down there into the uh, chicane and uh, giving it his all, but it's not enough. That's Rob Gibson Rob already flying away. Ross in second place. 
second place. Now we can see Gary Baker tucked in very, very close behind him with the rear wheel drive Ford Fiesta as they go down. Give you know, right off onto the grass, as is Ross Browning. And Ross Browning trying a little bit too hard there. And that's an old Baker through into second place. And Gary Baker is certainly closing on Rob Gibson. And someone else in trouble there is Roger Newbold. Roger going decidedly gently through the S's with looking like a, a handling problem on the Renault. On Claxton behind him, but the lead is already round to it. And it's Ross Browning trying to get back on terms. As we can see, Tom Fissett's car is stationary there, the yellow flag being waved to warn them. Rob Gibson comes skirting past it, as does the rest of the order. As just before the finish line, we can see that Tom Fissett has come to rest. Roger Newbold goes on his way. Roger holding fourth place, but up front, a terrific scrap going on. And we can see now that uh, Bob Gibson's had a 10-second penalty for a jump start. So that effectively means that uh, Gary Baker leads this one. For Rick Gibson to win, he has got to win by more than 10 seconds. Surely the board will come out to tell him as they come up the hill. That's where he might get the bit signal to tell him that he has been penalised. No sign of it there at the moment. But Gibson, with a 10-second penalty, has really got to pedal now as uh, Gary Baker will be, no doubt, chasing hard as is Ross Browning and uh, Roger Newbold sort of recovering there. But Ross going down through the Essers, still in third place, Paddock Wood through Farmer, ahead of his long-time rival during 1987 there, Roger Newbold, who at the moment has no answer to him. Meantime, Gibson still leads on the road, but is there a 10-second gap between him and second-place man Gary Baker? I think not. So that effectively means that Gary Baker should be leading. They're coming along towards the checkered flag and Gary Baker closing right in. And although Gibson wins on the road, it should be Gary Baker who is the victor. Ross Browning in second place and in third place, I would think maybe Roger Newbold and Gibson might well be fourth. But uh, Gibson definitely first on the road. But the car that's coming over the top of his drop there in second place, we think is the winner uh, with the 10-second penalty. That's number 100, Gary Baker.